Your day may be going great, but if any of these small screen guys shows up, you can kiss those good vibes goodbye. What happened to you? Hey, how about a little less questions and a little more shut the hell up? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 obnoxious animated TV characters. Ooh, a sarcasm detector. Ooh, that's a really useful invention. Oh, oh, happy this now, for this list, we've sought out the most annoying, self-obsessed, arrogant characters from animated TV shows. You know it, pork pie! While some of these jerks may exhibit sociopathic tendencies, they aren't all necessarily characters you'd fear. So don't expect a list full of straight-up psychopaths. At 6.30, you'll pull weeds, brush your teeth, and read five chapters from the wit and wisdom of Brainy Smurf. Number 10, Bender Bending Rodriguez, Futurama. Oh, no room for Bender, huh? Fine, I'll go build my own Lunar Lander with Blackjack and hookers. In fact, forget the Lunar Lander and the Blackjack. Ah, screw the whole thing. There don't seem to be any moral boundaries this far-out bending unit isn't willing to cross. Bender tends to embrace the taboo in all things, whether it's alcohol, violence, or getting frisky with the ladybots. Ah, Bender, let's do it. Also, don't expect any sympathy from this guy, because chances are he'll find any problems that you're going through to be utterly hilarious. I'm going to jump! No! Oh, do a flip! A pathological liar and a sloth, he also steals. A lot. I love stealing. I love taking things. Everyone can kiss his shiny metal ass as far as he's concerned. Is there an app for kissing my shiny metal ass? Several. Ooh. Though he does care for the beloved meat bags he calls friends. Sometimes. Don't worry, guys. I'll never be too good or too evil again. From now on, I'll just be me. Uh, do you think you could be just a little less evil than that? However, Bender is still priority number one in his directives. All right, let's get to work. I'll be out in a second. Number nine, Magic Man, also known as Normal Man, Adventure Time. Magic. Away! There is a reason this alien was banished from Mars to Earth. It's just unfortunate our planet got stuck with him. Yes, we also have to deal with Lemon Grab. Unacceptable! But Magic Man is far worse. Using his Martian powers, he joyfully torments the innocent. I win again, just like always! Sometimes it's pretending to be homeless and mutating the ones who help, Sometimes it's manipulating and duplicating the Land of Oo's heroes, all in a day's work. The worst part is that he claims to be teaching the world a valuable lesson. Oh yes, that's it! You finally learned your lesson. And now I have off to spread my teachings to more sissy do-gooders. You're welcome. Man, I freaking hate that guy. We understand the whole evil magician shtick. But don't go claiming you're passing down real advice, dude. Not until you appreciate what a jerk I am. Wazoo! Number eight, Gary Oak, Pokemon. Better late than never, I guess. At least you get the chance to meet me. A little bit of modesty goes a long way, Gary. Mr. Gary to you, show some respect. Riding the fame and success of his famous grandfather to further his own life. The Pokemon trainer opts to capture the strongest of the creatures instead of working hard. It's good to have a grandfather in the Pokemon business, isn't it? He doesn't even walk like the other trainers, riding in a chauffeured red convertible every time we see him. <laughs> Still playing with your cute little Pokepal. A Despite his extreme laziness, he's still hugely arrogant. Cause I want the pleasure of beating you myself. Then you'll see what a real Pokemon master looks like. Gee, I thought I had confidence. He teases Ash constantly and keeps a collection of groupie cheerleaders to ensure his ego remains inflated. We'd love to see this guy fall, but his legion of fangirls would just be there to pull him back up again. Let's go, girls. If I stay here much longer, I might catch loseritis and miss the competition. See ya. <laughs> Gary, Gary, he's the top. Till he wins, he never stops. Number seven, Bojack Horseman, Bojack Horseman. I parked in a handicapped spot. I hope that's okay. You parked in I'm a... I'm sorry, disabled spot. Is that the proper 
nomenclature. Maybe you should move the car. No, I don't think I should drive right now. I'm, I'm incredibly drunk. We're not sure how many beers it takes to get a horse drunk, but rest assured, Bojack is always past that mark. Are you drunk? Todd, I weigh over 1,200 pounds. It takes a lot of beer to get me drunk. Yes. As an alcoholic, he's bitter, depressed, and hates himself for blowing his chance at the Hollywood big time. Rather than coming to terms with his life, Bojack takes out his self-loathing on others. Did you just say you think the troops are jerks? Oh, you took that the bad way, didn't you? His destructive decisions hurt and impede the lives of the few who still care about him. And while there are times when it looks like Bojack cares about them too, these only serve as examples where he gallops back to his less than pleasant behaviorisms. Doesn't make you less of a horrible person. You think I'm pretty? Well, that was another in a long series of regrettable life choices. Number six, Brainy Smurf, the Smurfs. All right, Brainy, I'll give you three days to see if your time schedule works, and I want you all to cooperate. <laughs> Soon I'll have the whole village smurfing like a well-oiled machine. Stacked in this annoying blue know-it-all's house are big books full of quotes he finds inspirational. And of course, all those quotes were said by him. In my humble opinion, what we need is a way to keep track of time so that we can make better use of it. That may be all you need to know about Brainy, but just in case, you should also know that he's self-obsessed, openly admitting that he's his own favorite subject. My fellow Smurfs, your labors have produced a palace of great beauty, and I would say thanks if I didn't deserve every bit of it. Contrary to what his name suggests, Brainy is not that intelligent or wise. Rather, he actually knows very little and is usually wrong. Still, he boasts about himself, bosses the other Smurfs around, and constantly tries to show off. Honestly, we can't blame the village for getting tired of his antics on occasion. Just kidding! Help! Papa Smurf! Help! <laughs> I think the first thing Brainy has to clean up is his act. <laughs> Number five. Rick Sanchez, Rick and Morty. I love my grandkids. Oh. Psych. Just kidding. My new catchphrase is, I don't give a f Just a shit that ass, bitch, and let me see what you got. Genius, sociopath, alcoholic. Great combination, right? For this scientist, it's the right collection of traits to make him both brilliant and hated. Morty, you gotta flip him off. I told them it means peace among worlds. How hilarious is that? Having no sense of right and wrong, he lets his intellect take him down some pretty dark roads. Let's just say human life isn't his biggest concern. Hey, hey bro, how many people was your Morty responsible for killing today? None, we chilled at Blitz and Chits all day. Ain't that right, homie? You're darn right, bro. Rick has also allowed his substance abuse to make him cynical, so he's generally miserable, even on his best days. He takes no responsibility for his actions, is possessive of his grandson Morty, and rarely uses his genius for good. What a waste. Yeah, what are you in for? Everything. Number four, Brian Griffin, Family Guy. You know, Peter, I hate to say I told you so about not being a genius, but, uh, yeah, in your f***ing face, squad. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Where do we even begin with Brian? He thinks he's better than everyone else, morally and intellectually. In reality, his morals shift to agree with his actions, and he's a pseudo-intellectual at best. Follow your nose. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, no, that, that, that was good. I, I just, I, I didn't think you were gonna go so cartoony with it. Well, how, how, how would you read it? Oh, I, I don't know. I was thinking of doing it, you know, good, like, like an actor. But you know, your, your way's good too. He's had more than his fair share of ladies, but is spineless when it comes to any kind of commitment. Yeah, okay, Quagmire may be sleazy too, but at least he's honest about it. Brian occasionally fights as a bleeding heart liberal, and when he does, he's always in your face about it. A bag of weed, a bag of weed, oh everything is better with a bag of weed. You can try and fight, but we're all agreed, because everything is better with a bag of weed. Let's also add that he's unemployed, tries to sleep with his best friend's wife, pretends he's an author, and drives a Prius. Enough said. Hey, you must be the owner of that Prius outside. Thanks for saving the world. He gets it. He gets what we Prius owners are trying to do. Number three, comic book guy, 
The Simpsons. There's no emoticon for what I'm feeling. Before there were internet trolls and YouTube commenters, it was this nerd making all others look bad for their geeky interests. Comic book guy. A complete list of things I have seen or not seen is available on my blog. Your mother is on the not seen list, along with a Star Wars film that was any good since the first one. And even that has been ruined by CGI additions. Bravo, George. The proprietor of Springfield's Den of Geek. Comic book guy is grossly obese and supremely sarcastic. His genius level intellect is wasted on his love of superheroes, mythical folklore, and putting other people down. He can't be the Hulk. I'm the Hulk. <laughs> oh, please. You couldn't even change into Bill Bixby. We must admit, though, he's talented at being a jerk. His blows are well-crafted and eloquent. I get my news from the internet like every other normal person under 70. Farewell, dinosaur. Comic book guy has also cemented himself in pop culture with his ultra-snarky catchphrase. Worst entry ever. The worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes registering my disgust throughout the world. Number two, Sterling Archer, Archer. Lana. Lana. Lana! What? <laughs> Danger zone. James Bond is the ultimate suave super spy. Now take away the charm, double the narcissistic personality disorder, and add a penchant for sarcasm and you have Sterling Archer. Oh good, because your opinion matters. And since you seem unclear on the concept, that was sarcasm. He is undeniably a talented secret agent but his douchebag tendencies cause more trouble than his good traits could ever make up for. I mean, morality aside, how do you keep track of all these lies? Practice, Cyril. Lying is like 95% of what I do. In your job. Sure. He's a misogynist, sex addict, and an alcoholic. Come on, get me drunk enough and I might have sex with you. Really? No, it's a catch-22. The amount of alcohol I would need would literally kill me. Dick. But I do want to see how many pool balls you can fit in your mouth. He's selfish, borderline brutal when it comes to undermining his colleagues, and generally unconcerned with the well-being of others. Much to the dismay of the world, he's also too valuable to lose. So, it seems we're stuck with him. On behalf of his fellow ISIS agents, please let me be the first to offer my condolences. And let me be the first to welcome you back into the dating pool. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. That's right, a all suspense paid vacation in Angelica land. <sighs> Sometimes I wish I could be you. Just so I could be friends with me. I can't drink that. Why not? Are you blind? Just look at it. What about it? That lemon has three seeds in it. That's an odd number! I use her as a shower, Mitch. Does that bother you, Quizbe? Exactly, Lidge! That's a priceless artifact and part of our collective childhood, you monster! <laughs> <laughs> This is your elegant plan? <laughs> you think I'm gonna give you the money to get you to stop making that noise? Number one, Eric Cartman, South Park. Hey, Carmen, did you bring us money from your mom? <laughs> yeah, right, you guys can kiss my black ass. There is no insufferable animated small screen character quite like Cartman. He curses in a way that sailors can only dream of and takes every opportunity to make fun of others. Good morning, students. How are we all feeling today? And those are his nice qualities. He's also spoiled, compassionless, ignorant, and, charmingly, an anti-Semite. We'll just say it, he's evil. Cartman is a manipulator, constantly toying with his friends for whatever personal gain he's obsessing over at the time. There are no limits on the lengths to which Cartman will go in order to succeed. Is that true, Eric? Did you give Kyle AIDS? Well, he was being a total dick, and then he's a big tattertown going around talking crap about me. Close friend or mortal enemy, Cartman will treat all people equally horribly. Trust us, either steer clear of Cartman or respect his authority. I have authority? That's right, and people must respect it. Well, that should be fine, just fine. Fine, just fine. Oh no, nothing's worse than Carmen with authority. Do you agree with our list? 
Who do you think is the most obnoxious animated TV character? Oh my luck, the answer is yes. <gasps> Boom! <laughs> Congratulations. Oh! <laughs> For more interesting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Yes, I did it! There is no God in your face! One dot, motherfucker! Yeah! Yeah!